Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. Today's video is on the types of electric cars currently available in Australia. Before we get into it, I just wanted to thank you all for subscribing so far to this channel. We're almost up to 1,500 subscribers these days, so thank you all for your support. If you haven't done so already, please click on that red subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. When you think of electric cars, most people think of, you know, Teslas and uh, what we t call battery electric vehicles, but if you look at electric vehicles as a whole, it's actually one big family. It's not just the electric vehicles that have 100% uh, battery-driven motors. There are also um, the plug-in electric vehicles, uh, which include things like uh, the Mitsubishi Outlander, the Mercedes C350e. Um, there's also hybrid electric vehicles where it's not plugged in, but the, uh, mo the engine acts as a generator to charge the battery part of the car. So I've created a little slide um, here with a little table to so to differentiate the three types of electric vehicles, namely battery electric vehicles, which is 100% electric, um, then the, the plug-in hybrid types, and also the hybrid types without the plug-in. So obviously uh, battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid vehicles allow you to charge the car by plugging in a cord. For uh, the plug-in hybrid vehicles um, and hybrid electric vehicles, um, the engine sometimes charges the battery uh, if it's low on charge. Obviously in a hybrid vehicle, um, the engine has to charge the battery. In a plug-in hybrid, um, the engine sometimes does charge the battery depending on what model you have. All three types of electric vehicles have regenerative braking, meaning that if you coast without um, holding on the accelerator, uh, that kinetic energy then helps to charge the battery at the same time. Uh, it also slows the car down, which is uh, very useful. It doesn't wear your brake pads down as much. In terms of pure electric range, obviously the battery electric vehicles like a Tesla has a good, really good range. Um, they can get you sometimes four to 500 kilometers of range, depending on what model you get. The plug-in hybrid electric vehicles um, have a better range than the pure hybrid electric vehicles, but not much better. Like we're talking, you know, in a plug-in hybrid, 30 to 40 kilometers versus maybe two kilometers in a hybrid. Um, the overall range now, obviously the um, battery electric vehicles just can't compete with the hybrids. Um, the hybrids, if you combine both electric and the uh, combustion engine together, you'll get you know, a range of close to a thousand kilometers, which is pretty good whereas the top Tesla will only get you five to 600 kilometers of range. So um, that's where the hybrid vehicles come in uh, really strong. And looking at the price, um, the battery electric vehicles tend to be more expensive in general than uh, plug-in hybrids and the hybrids. Although having said that, there are a few examples where the plug-in hybrid is still very expensive. Obviously it depends on the type of make and model, and we'll go through that a little bit later on. Today we're going to focus on battery electric vehicles and also plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. So let's look at plug-in hybrid electric vehicles to start with. Here are 10 uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles currently available for sale in Australia, varying in price uh, and battery capacity and electric range. Um, I've got them listed here in alphabetical order and we'll have a little play with the different categories to see uh, the different types of cars. So we've got the Audi A3 e-tron, the BMW 330e, BMW X5 xDrive 40e, Mercedes-Benz C350e, Mercedes-Benz GLE 500e, the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, Porsche Cayenne SE Hybrid, Porsche Panamera 4e Hybrid, the Range Rover Sport PHEV, and the Volvo XC90 T8. Let's have a look at the, these cars now in terms of price in ascending order. Because there's not been an update for some of these cars, um, I've had to get second-hand prices. Uh, for example, the Audi A3 e-tron um, is a second-hand price at 40,000 kilometers. It's got a battery capacity of 8.8 kilowatt hours with a range of 50 kilometers. The PHEV has been around for a little while as well. Um, a new PHEV costs $50,000 with a battery capacity of 12 kilowatt hours and gets you um, 50 kilometers of range. The Mercedes-Benz C350e is $70,000, um, 6 kilowatt hour battery, 31 kilometers. The BMW 330e is also $70,000 and has a similar battery and range. Porsche Cayenne, a bit more expensive at $90,000. Bigger battery, but similar range at 30 kilometers. The um, next few cars are all more than $100,000 each, um, but you'll notice that you get the similar range, you know, 30 kilometers um, mostly, except for the last two, the Range Rover Sport and the Porsche Panamera. Um, have a bigger battery, but again, you know, 50 kilometers of range, not a lot extra for the money you pay. I guess you are paying for the brand and the make, you know, you're paying for a Porsche, um, you know, a Range Rover, Volvo, BMW, but overall you'll see that the range is not great. It's sort of 30 to 50 kilometers and um, 
admittedly the price is uh, certainly more than uh, their internal combustion engine counterparts. So let's get into 100% uh, electric cars in Australia, currently for sale in this country. And sadly, there's only seven electric cars on the market currently. The first two are Teslas, which obviously are very well known. The next one is the BMW i3. Then we get into the Renault range, the Renault Zoe and the Renault Kangoo ZE. Then the Nissan Leaf, which is also quite well known. This is the 1.0 version and the Mitsubishi IMI EV, which has been around a little while now in Australia. In terms of prices, um, the Teslas are obviously more expensive. They come in at $140,000 for a Tesla Model S and $150,000 for a Tesla Model X. But having said that, they do have the greatest range. Um, you can get up to 600 kilometers worth of range in an S and an X, and they certainly have a big battery capacity, topping out at 100 kilowatt hours in the top models. The BMW i3 has a range of 190 kilometers um, with a battery capacity of 33 kilowatt hours. The Renault Zoe has a range of 300 kilometers, while the Kangoo ZE has a range of 170 kilometers. The Nissan Leaf 1.0, which has been around in this country since 2012, has a range of 120 kilometers, and the Mitsubishi IMIV EV has a range of 100 kilometers. Well, that's uh, that's my little rundown of uh, all the electric vehicles in Australia currently. Uh, with a particular focus on 100% uh, electric, i.e. battery, and also the plug-in hybrid electric vehicles as well. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, leave a comment below if you've got any questions or if you've got any comments with regards to electric vehicles in Australia. Hopefully we'll see more of these coming up in the next year or two. There's a Senate inquiry currently happening in Australia looking at the usage and production of uh, electric vehicles in Australia, and the report is due to come out very shortly. Alright guys, hope it's a lovely day wherever you are in this world, and as always, happy charging. Thanks for watching, and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to keep up to date with our latest videos. If you're about to buy a Tesla, use our promo code on screen to score $100 in supercharging credit. Happy charging!